Well, cool, man. Well, I'm excited Boy. to talk to both of you. We'll get into Wait. your tour. You got one date left coming up. Yeah, cool right here. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to do Your new music video, your new EP. Uh, before we get into all, all right. that cool, amazing stuff, here at Bionic Buzz, we're all about people's passion. I want to know where your passion for music came from that led you to pick up the guitar. We'll start with you, Phil. What was Where did your passion for music come growing up in uh, Canada? My dad. My dad, uh, we grew up with a steady uh, array of Greek music playing throughout the household, and my dad played bazooki. So I, I believe he needed a guitar player. So when I was five, he's like, you should play guitar. <laughs> but I mean, it was a modest hot household, man. It was my mom, my dad, four kids, and my grandparents sometimes in a two-bedroom apartment downtown Toronto. And, uh, and he still bought me an electric guitar for Christmas. Wow. Like that was that to me, even now that speaks volumes, probably more than when I was five. But uh, it was funny. My dad, he got it for me for Christmas and he was making shoes at the time. He worked at a, at a factory like an, kind of sounds like an elf, right? And he's making shoes, <laughs> but he was making shoes. And he like, um, you know, those, you know, when you buy a guitar in a guitar, in a guitar store without a case, like you, you get it in this fish stick cardboard box, right? So he had that on his shoulder and a bunch of bags and he came into the house and I was at the top of the stairs going, is that a guitar? And he's like, uh, no, it's shoes. And I was like, damn, I like totally believed him because he's dead, right? Everything dad says is like the yeah. word. Yeah. So I thought that was a pretty funny story, but then it was a guitar. And then uh, in no time at all, I had an Elvis set together by the time I was six. So that's uh the passion was my dad. He's he was like the, he was the, the life of a party. If he went anywhere with his bazooki, it was like Elvis was in the building. So it was just I saw that as a young child, and I was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" Very and the passion cool. was from from political songs from the '40s. I, I noticed that with the major in the major mode, he can make people laugh, and in the minor mode, he can make people cry. So I was like, "Wow, music's a powerful thing," and that's. Uh, you got all that in 30 seconds, man. I, I love yeah. that. That's fantastic. Uh, Kurt, do you, uh, can you, <laughs> where'd your passion for music kind of come from growing up? Well, I, I grew up, when I grew up, the first, uh, one of the first gifts I remember getting when I was two was a, dr a little a drum set. So my parents had gotten me a little drum set. My dad was always a, uh, a, a very passionate singer in the church choir every Sunday, every went to practice where he was in town and and didn't uh, he wasn't traveling uh, my sister was also a very uh, very good singer and um, she grew up doing theater played Annie and shows uh, did hair on tour in Europe um, dabbled in music but, but, I didn't you know, even know that yeah yeah she was man and, she would she would have been like the perfect uh, person to, to be on the voice now and stuff like that she had a real powerful operatic voice and they have both passed away so when they did it back when i was younger i was always the guy uh, you know I, I had to go to all the stuff i had to sit in the car on vacations and listen to all these show tunes and it just drove me crazy probably why i started partying a little too much when i was young <laughs> And I, I got into music and I had a band, but I knew back then I w didn't have what it took to do it right. And I put it on hold and raised a family and matured and finished my degrees and started other businesses just saying, if I could ever get back into this someday and do it right and be able to work my way to the top, then I will do it. And uh, that came to me in 2017 um, when I w was seen on the set of uh, Trading Paint to do a cameo and they offered me a speaking role. And then with uh, John Travolta and Shania Twain and I'm like, okay, this must be my sign. And then a year later, here I am, I'm re-recording some vocals for somebody and uh, the passion was in me. And I think my parent, my, my, my dad and my sister's spirits in me and I say, let's go every night I get on stage, I look up in the sky and I say, let's go have some fun and rock this crowd out. So that's what that. that's got me back into it, yeah. Well, I think so. that's inspired because a lot of people like, oh, I had to have that passion as a kid and go through it through my whole age. 
but you can have that passion in later in life after ra raising kids or doing oh, whatever, and you can still go back and start a band, you know? <laughs> yeah, I wanted, when I, if I was going to do what I wanted to do it right, because I went to all the shows, you know, 78 to 85 was major seven years of seeing Judas Priest like nine times, Iron, all, uh, Ozzy, Iron Maiden, so Ozzy with Randy Rhodes, uh, Dio oh. and Black Sabbath, you know, it's, it's like, if I can, if I can get to where I can do this someday, what, how awesome would that be? So it was an input in my brain that I wanted to do it. It's just, I had to wait and feel my way to when the time was right. So cool. So here but we both are. Of you, yeah. Both of you had your passion. how did you guys meet together? I mean, like Phil, obviously you're busy with Bon Jovi and other, and both of you have so many other well, that, projects. That, that's the thing. Here. Everything, everybody was busy until the, uh, the pandemic uh, hit. Uh -huh. And then everybody w went on vacation, uh, not by uh, choice, of course. Not but choice, uh, yeah. you know, so we, this was kind of like a joint thing during the pandemic. Like, hey, you started collaborating over Zoom or something. Well, no, that's no, no. So the whole thing was like uh, it was. Uh, you know, I was I was one of those guys that was like, oh my god, everything canceled. What am I going to do? I have mouths to feed. And then in June of 2020, Chris Lord Algae, who him and and Kurt had already spoke, but Chris was like. I'm doing this project and I want you to play guitar in it. And I'm like, okay, just send me tracks, man. Send me the tracks. So he sent me the tracks. I record everything at home. I do background vocals. I'd sent him everything. And this is great. Let's just do a few more songs. But in the interim, one of the songs was Have a Cigar with Kurt's yeah, voice on it. And so Chris played Kurt my guitars and Kurt was like, what the f <laughs> like that yeah. Yeah, i literally like froze up and i was like getting chills in my arms and i'm just like uh, it's a great cover by the way too yeah yeah the solo that he does. And we, we, all, we all still get goosebumps when we hear it but you know it to move on it's you know i did a bunch of songs for kurt that he already had in the bag and then um okay. and then he said hey man if i send you lyrics will you put some music to my lyrics and then that happened and that that um that put more of an investment in it for me. You know, mm -hmm. when I was just putting ridiculous guitars on his tunes, I was like, I asked somebody else to play it live. And then, uh, and then when we wrote the songs together, then it was like, man, I think I, I gotta do this live. But then I shot myself in the foot because some of the stuff is hard. <laughs> <laughs> cool, so I, I see all these songs ended up on the EP, right? Work hard, rock hard, which I love the title, by the way. Does that have something to do with your, your parents, I assume, Kurt, or? It's just, I've always had a hard work ethic. I've worked mm -hmm. since I was a kid. I mean, doing different things. I had a lawn business when I was 10, cut like 25 lawns a week, made 500 a week. I was a telemarketer at night, you know, after I'd go to high school all day. So I've always been a hard worker. And I believe that, you know, without hard work in your life, it, you can have all the talent in the world. You can't, it, you can never let it shine. So you've got to work hard to rock hard. So I just kind of put it together. I want to, you know, we love rocking out. We, we, you know, we're, we're, Phil and I are even talking now. We do need some more slammers. You know, we've got su such a variety of tunes. And I just thought how, I, you know, apropos would it be to just call it work hard, rock hard, because it's pretty much who I am and what I like to do. So Work hard, rock hard. I love that. Well, uh, your single from the EP, Burn Together, which figured uh, Jeff, formerly Queens White, who I got to interview once, said, uh, where was it? At? Oh, the Metal Hall of Fame during NAM. What an awesome, nice guy. Um, talk about, I mean, you obviously got him to be in a song, and then you're actually on tour with him recently. And talk about how'd you get hooked up with him? Well, it Kind of how Phil and I got hooked up when I when I got when I came out to LA, I had some different management in the past, you know, who, mm -hmm. you know, kind of was taken a bit, they took advantage of me, but it was part of the stepping stones to get to where I was. I brought a demo, if I call it now, out there. And mm -hmm. that's how Chris Lord Algae and I hooked up. And then that's how Phil and I hooked up because he's our producer and our sound engineer, mixer, everything. And then through that, um, I had met uh, Kyle Gerhardt, who's my tour manager. And once we figured out on that little tour I did last year, this was before Phil, we figured out things weren't really heading in the right direction. So Kyle said, I'm going to call Andy Gould, 
who managed Rob Zombie, Lincoln Park, to name a few. And let's see what he says. So Chris Lord Algie and I go over there to have a little uh, glass of wine. And next thing you know, he has not seen me, doesn't know if I can even go in front of a band or anything. And Andy Gould says, let's go for this, you know. And then Paul Gargano comes along with them as a bonus. I didn't even know it. And that is how I met Jeff Tate. Paul Gargano has a Queensryche tattoo on his leg, has known Queensryche for, he just loves him. That's the, his favorite band. Yeah. And, and he got on the phone with Jeff Tate and said, what, got a new artist, we're debuting. What do you think? We talked about the tour. We talked about maybe one of the songs. Um, and I said, I think Burn Together would be the one that I would want Jeff on to counter my vocals. And Phil's already doing some high, some highs even higher than Jeff's still in it. So he brings us all together. We do a package. We're shooting a music video. Next thing you know, here I am with Jeff Tate, the, the guy I saw on MTV with the orchestra who I idolized as a kid. And I've got Phil X, you know, my friend and, and brother now running by my side playing. I mean, how blessed am I? And Chris, yeah. Lord, my producer, it's like crazy. Yeah, the team, the team is pretty incredible. Like we yeah. put a really, really great band together, and Kyle is like our sixth member because he he mixes <laughs> us like sometimes we don't even get sound check, but he's got it so dialed in that the first song sounds great, and we got people's attention right from the start, which is amazing. And uh, it's just a, uh, you know, I mean, we just did forty five shows. Since yeah, uh, September, and you September, got uh, yeah. one more coming up uh, and the whiskey, I think the uh, November 26th, yeah. if I remember. It's Friday, yeah. the Friday night after Thanksgiving, yeah. All right, if you're in LA, man, come check it out. Yeah, exactly. So uh, let's get into the music video. It was directed by uh, Paul Boyd. I mean, what a masterpiece. It's like a movie. I mean, where did you guys shoot this? It looks like, like, if you ever been to Universal Studios backlot, that War of the World set with the airplane and stuff, <laughs> the crash oh, airplane. Yeah. Uh, I assume it's somewhere in California desert, right? Or you can fill me in yeah. on the details in the music video. Well, it is, but it's it like, when you walk out there, when that drove up, I was like, what the? Like, I mean, <laughs> did, it, did a plane actually crash here? And they just left it all out. And it's just, it's kind of spooky in a way, but at the same time, you see stuff that you've never seen anywhere else before. Yeah, it, it was out in Palmdale at Eclectic West. And um, it, it, it was a really great, uh, a great pick by Paul. And I think it really uh, helped tell the tale. And Phil and I could get a kick out of the fact we're out there, it's 115 degrees. and. I, you know, I'm wearing black and long pants. I, I was gonna. Oh, yeah. That's gonna be my next you question because I will be. I'll be doing that too. You know, like, I don't I care do how hot it is. I, I want to look good. <laughs> I almost burned my hand on the neck. It got so oh, hot yeah. that the paint on the neck was almost melting. It was like so. I had to go. I'm yeah, glad I did because I love that guitar. I, I play it. Uh, I use it for the song live too. Well, we got such. We got such a kick out of it. Um, because uh, Jeff Tate and I are, we're shooting our scenes and Jeff Tate is literally singing like Jeff Tate. Remember that, Phil? All, Dude, like, it's full it's on. like I was, he was singing full voice. So I'm like, yeah. oh my God, hearing that voice is one thing, but hearing it come out of that face, it's yeah. like, what? Yeah, goosebumps. In the desert, in the heat, didn't seem to phase him whatsoever. I mean, what a great guy. He's a truly a great, nice guy. I appreciate everything he's done. And uh, Phil and I are very appreciative that we got to go expose ourselves to the fans, our music to the fans on his tour opening. So, yeah, it's been oh, a good one. Well, cool. Well, what's coming up for both of you guys now? I mean, the, the tour's kind of wrapping up. Uh, is there going to be new music videos, any more tour shows for anything you guys got going on? I think uh, the holidays. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't well, think I, I guess we're next year, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 2020, we, we're looking at a lot of stuff in 2020. So, that's exciting. Nothing, yeah, 20, nothing firmed up yet. Gotcha. Yeah, nothing firmed up yet, but they're, they're working on uh, tours for us for next year. Um, I'm going to be shooting a movie next year. Did I just say 2020 or 2022? Well, 2022, it's all right. That's, that's what I meant. That's, I screwed up the titles. It's work hard, work hard, rock hard. <laughs> I'm dyslexic, yeah. so I'm always wanting to see that. Work hard Very and rock cool. hard. But yeah, we're, uh, they're working on tours right now. I'm going to... Uh, uh, if whenever Phil, whenever we know when Phil might be out playing with John, I'm going to try to plan shooting my movie around that. We're, we're gonna, just going to 
try to work around everything the best we can. And uh, we can't wait to be back where I'm already depressed and I'm not playing again tonight. So I'm trying to get over that. The two, the tour depression, the over, you know, tour over depression. Yeah. It's funny. Cause people always talk about that. You know, we, we just did 10 in a row. And uh, as much as I love being home and with my girl and my kids and be, get to be daddy again, I, we were ready to do another 10 in a row. Yeah. <laughs> I we always hear it. that. I mean, I, I only did one tour. I had a clothing line. I went on the whole Vans Warped tour. And I was so excited when the tour was finally going to end. I was like, I just want to go home. I can't wait to have my bed and shower. And then, of course, I got really depressed, like, the next day. Like, you know? yeah. So, like, do people actually, like, did that ever happen to you guys? Like, the, the end of the tour, you're like, oh, I'm so excited this will be over. But then when you get home, you're like, oh, I miss it. And it's like. <laughs> well, it was bittersweet at the end, for sure. Yeah. The, the bitter was sweet. that it was, uh, it was ending. But the sweet was like, okay, we get to go home. We get to take a break. You know, I mean, being a dad is the best thing that ever happened to me personally. So, I mean, getting to see these guys' faces and they making me laugh all morning, nothing, nothing beats that. But yeah. when we were, like you're saying bye to everybody that you've just hung out with for nine months and you're like, wow, that's it? Like, it's yeah. almost like it whizzed by so fast. It does, it goes, I you think back. I said so, months or weeks. I don't even know what I'm saying these days. You said nine. You said nine months. Weeks. <laughs> uh, I thought, I thought maybe you were talking about like old Bon Jovi tour or something. I'm going to sign off right now. Like, yeah. You know. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I'll be. Uh, I'm going to be working with management too. Get we got to get finish getting our uh, store up on our website on kurtzarmer.com, gotcha. and I, I just we got a lot. We. We've already got what Phil about twenty five to thirty other tunes in the bank. So oh, awesome! Yeah. So we hoping like a new EP or a new album next year, maybe. We've got new EPs ready to go. We're we're gotcha. working on a song right now. I'm going to record after the whiskey show next the week after out in L.A. And uh, yeah, we're always writing and uh, just going to keep this thing building oh. and growing and take it all over the world. When, when you play, like, we were, I forget where we were. I found a guitar in Fort Lauderdale that reminded me of the Strat that me and my dad went halvesies on when I was 11. And I was like, I gotta get this guitar. And then when I put my hand on it at the shop, I was like, I was 11 again. It was the guitar, you know? Oh. It wasn't, not literally, but it was, you know, the memory was amazing. But then as soon as I got on the bus and plugged it into my little bus amp, I wrote our next song, like... <laughs> Yep. He, he had sent me lyrics the day before and then and then i had the song and it was like i just can't i'm gonna record it he's gonna record the video uh the lyrics yep. i mean the vocals and stuff like that and then it's gonna be uh it's, it's, it's exciting when stuff happens like that you know oh yeah. i love stories like that well let's go let's quickly because i gotta take my daughter to see a new ghostbusters movie soon um did your dad ever get to see you play with bon jovi phil like in front of like thousands no he of people? he he passed in in 2000 oh. Five. But when I was still living in Toronto, I was playing with a band called uh, Frozen Ghost. And uh, we opened up for Honeymoon Suite at Maple Leaf Gardens. Actually, it was, I don't know if you know all these bands. It was Frozen Ghost, you don't know. Uh, Last Tiger, you probably know, and Honeymoon Suite. No. See, anyway, I, I know Our Lady Peace. Garden. They're from that area. Yeah. <laughs> I, I played on the first record. Um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. We go way back with those guys. But oh, that's awesome. We, you know, it was like one of those things. Um, my dad and my mom got to see us, got to see me play at Maple Leaf Gardens. Oh, that's um, cool. That's, that's and every time, but every time, my, my mom just passed too, but every time, every time we played the arena in Toronto, she, she, she came, she saw me play, you know, and it was something too, because you figure, they go, hey, we got free tickets in uh, Obstructed View. I'm like, what? <laughs> Here's my credit card. Give my mom good tickets, you know? And then she's sitting there and I'm playing one of Dead or Alive and I just see her beaming. It's pretty amazing. And she came, she saw us like five, six times. She came to see us in Houston too, I think. Yeah, awesome. it's crazy. Like my mom was like a, a fan. She was awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Well, congratulations to both of you guys. Keep up the amazing work. Everyone check out Work Hard, Rock Hard EP out now. And also they have a single amazing cover of Have a Cigar by Pink Floyd. And we'll be seeing new music next year. Yep. And Naive, the video for Naive just came out too on Friday. Oh, yeah. Really cool. That yeah, kicks well, ass. Cool video, killer tune. 
Yeah, it. it's, the, it's the first song off the EP, and it's uh, every, if, if people just Google my name, Kurt, K-U-R-T, Dimer, D-E-I-M-E-R, you pretty much can pull up everything, so, and that's the website, too, and it'll link you to everything. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for taking your time to talk to me, and we'll talk down the road, all right? Yep, thank you, you very good. much thank for you, having sir. me. Right.